Okay, so a friend of mine wanted me to react to this, and it's titled World's Worst Magician Grins Fail Magic Show on the Funny Fail channel. Let's find out. Okay, but stop, stop, stop. This is like back in the 70s, so you... I think I heard a British accent. You can't say something's cringe from like this era or it, any older because it's just the way the presentations and things were back then. That's all it is. That's all it is. He's got a rope. Okay, so this is a competition and it's Paul Norris. Let's see what we got here. Good evening. Good evening. Hey. Now I'm going to show you a trick out of the disappearing knot out of Houdini's rope. Thank you. Now you I don't know if you should have went up there with that. OG Mac Daddy, thank you for joining in. I'm looking at what I assume it's supposedly cringe because I'm a magician so uh, I had a friend that wanted me to look at this and I'm s I'm confused as to why oh Mac Daddy thank you for the follow I'm confused as to why he went on a competition show and did that trick let me let me back this up in case you didn't see this thing this is weird also, he seems very nervous. And the video quality, it's hard. I know what he's doing. Thank you. Because it's, now you did it's a knot that you can't, that won't, like, not. Like, it's cool. But it's not like if I were to go on a, on a ga game show. Jesus Christ. It's not as if I were to go on a show and I would do something with a $100 bill. Hold on. There we go with a hundred dollar bill and then do like a card trick and then and then make somebody's card appear with a hundred dollar bill it well then again they didn't have that kind of stuff back then because this is like a newer thing that my friend figured out what is this Let me see. Well, i will make the, the rope stand on end Thank you. Now, see that part. That's kind of cool because I don't, I don't know how to do that. Well, there's one kind of rope that you could use, um, and it's gimmick rope. But he just did, uh, made a knot with that one, or not a knot. So you can't. Mm, this is kind of weird so far. Why is this current? Like I understand, like he has this weird energy to him, but it's not cringe so far. Oh no, I appreciate you showing me some love. Like it, it was definitely going very, very far downhill fast uh, at that point. I was just like, oh hell. Now for my next trick. This one is dis the disappearing cigarette. Here I have a cigarette holder. As you can see, completely empty. Oh, now I'll get out a pack of cigarettes. Okay. Excuse me a minute while I get in trouble here. What? Here we go. One cigarette. I will place a cigarette inside. Okay, so... Stuff, stuff screws up all the time. Why is this under cringe? Like, I get this is weird to some people, but... And the quality, it's not that great. I'm just trying to do... Okay. What in the world? Oh, his gimmick's messed up. Okay, now and I And here we are, disappearing cigarette. Uh, uh, there we are. I believe I'm with the judges on that one, I think. Uh, no. Uh, 
Because I've had stuff screw up on me on stage before, and I just move on. I go to something different. And if he's on a competition, I would hope that he would have other things. Because this is why you, this is why magicians really wear suits and stuff like this, so that we can have multiple tricks loaded in all the different pockets and have pocket management and have backups for all the tricks in case anything were to go wrong, such as cigarettes. Um, because I think at seventies. I'm pretty sure this is seventies. So seventies, I know what I know what he's using, or what he had to have used. But it doesn't. I'm looking at a gimmick right now. That would do it. And I don't understand. Okay, now well, maybe I'm thinking too much. What I have here. Let's see what else you got. One Visa card. I'd make it change into a five-pound note. Oh, that's good. I didn't know they had gimmicks like that in the seventies. Now for my last trick, I like to make a ten-pound note disappear and return again. As you see, one piece of card. We'll place the ten-pound note inside. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> ah, thank you very much. Good luck, boys. Seen thank you very before. much. Again, I, I only stick to a certain amount of magic. Like, I don't go really for newer new stuff. I do what I like. Oh, I enjoy slice of hand today. Let me back that up for a second. I do what I like and what I know laymen like, look for. Like, uh, an example. And I've seen a meme for it for the last, like, week or two. And it's really relevant. Um, so there's a picture of a, of a magician. And we're thinking of all the different kinds of card tricks and stuff. Like, we have different names for all different kinds of stuff, like Red Hot Mama, Any Card at Any Number, Teleportation, Spengali Deck. We have all these different, and it's lined up on this side. And then the other side is the spectator. And all of their, like, there's all these options that the magician is thinking about. And then over on this side on the spectator, just says card trick. That's it. So that's the way I try to do my magic for people. I, I understand that there's newer stuff. But more than most, it doesn't matter as long as it's magic. So you don't need to go off and do it on a crazy tangent on like all these different variations of a trick. People like the classic stuff or just visual stuff like that dollar bill that I just did. Uh, that's for my friend Dalton. Dalton Wayne. And I don't think these judges are going to be too kind to this guy. I just have a bad feeling. Because for a talent show... I think he could have chosen better stuff. I, because we, with any competition, you want it to be big, you want it to be flashy, and you want to try to make the audience either very, very entertained, or you want to be them involved more in the trick. Um, oh. oh, I enjoy slice of hand, I do. <laughs> That's uh, Paul Norris, he's a cabinet maker. Uh, He's worked in holiday camps from some children's parties, and more. I thought he was going to do some comedy, but uh, a bit of magic there. I is a cabinet maker? Oh. Oh, okay, okay. Act number two, Tony. Hello, Paul. Hello. How long have you been doing that for? Well, ever since I was small, really, you know, yeah. since the age of ten. You were, ver you were very nervous, weren't you? Very, very nervous. Well, it's my very first time yeah, of here. Yeah, course. It's understandable there. You need much more patter, and you need to prepare your props better because... See, I don't like the word patter. This is a fight between magicians. There's patter, and then there's script. I prefer scripting. Um, mostly because it's the I work in, I've done a lot of film theater, all that stuff, I prefer to say script because you can ad lib, in my opinion you can ad lib script, patter just doesn't sound right it it irks me I don't know why because I, I, to be honest with you, I, I think I'm right Faith, I didn't understand what you did with the, the cigarette, it, I got so fascinated you couldn't get the cigarette out of the packet I think is that right? Yes. Something went wrong there did it? Well, a little bit, yes. Yeah. So uh, that trick. Didn't well, that's go... the tricks of the trade. They all go wrong. <laughs> they all go. <laughs> they... Was it meant to go wrong? Eh? No, it wasn't. Oh, I see. Oh, I'll do uh, right. twenty on that. Twenty points from Tony. So the cigarette was. Hold on. So the cigarette did ma malfunction. Okay, here's another thing. This is why you have backups for backups, and you have all this stuff. Is a David Blaine logic. If you don't admit, and what he did is kind of a no-no. If you don't admit 
that something messed up, then you could keep going. And if his cigarette thing messed up, this is the 70s. I would have just lit it and did the trick. And then if the trick worked, cool. If not, I keep the cigarette lit and I'm smoking it during the rest of my show. And if they bring it up, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I just really wanted to smoke. And that was a gag to get it out. Because David Blaine's logic is they don't know if you messed up until you admit it. When you admit it, you screw up. And if you don't admit it, you just keep going until something works. And then, boom, you got it. You're wrong, eh? No, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, I see. I did, uh, 20 on that. 20 points from Tony. I've got a lot of work to do on the act, my darling. Give me and some I, points, please. As it stands, I can only give you 18. So. 18 points from Faye. <laughs> OK. Good luck to you in the future, Paul. So, you going to say? Yeah. I should never give up. I should keep going. That's Come brilliant. Back. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> No idea what the show is. That's it. Yeah. You enjoy it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed you as well, Paul. Excellent. Okay. 20 points from Tony, 18 from Make the Faith makes a total of 38 points to act number two. So it doesn't even say if he like moved on. Oh my god, they only did this because he's got that he's get he looks a little strange and he was mostly just nervous. It wasn't even that he was bad. Like he did most of what he did, except for you know, oh, what is all this? Get out of here. <laughs> Fundamental rule. Never, no, never tell them, never tell them that you screwed up. That's the thing. 